Welcome to this technical briefing on promoting local production of medicines and other health technologies, which we will serve to launch the first interagency statement endorsed by the six agencies that are sitting at this table. We just had this photo, which is a historical photo, because it's the first ever a statement of this kind. And uh, uh, we're very happy to have you all here because it's clearly local production has been the subject of discussions in WGA and other international forums. This has led to various resolutions and high-level declarations on local production, such as the African Union's Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Plan for Africa. Yes. And this reflects the potential role of local production place in improving access to quality, assured, safe, effective, and affordable medical products. And then we need to take this in the context of globalization in the variety of country contexts, promoting sustainable local production of assured, quality assured medicines. It's actually very complex. Huh? It requires a sustained and collective commitment from member states, partners, and other relevant stakeholders. In collaborations among all parties, is thus is essential. Different parts of the government need to be involved. Different stakeholders at country level need to be involved. Development agencies need to be involved. So it, this is essential to coordinate and drive the collective efforts promoting quality local production and the end result we want is that improve, to improve access to medicines. During this event, we will first have statements from the six signatory uh, organizations, we, which will be followed by a panel discussion with representatives from Br Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Ethiopia, and Pakistan. And then we will open the floor for a few interventions. With these opening remarks, I'm very pleased to give the floor to Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, are my boss, actually, <laughs> and the, the head of this, this organization. Please, Dr. Tedros, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Maria Angela, our moderator. Excellencies, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to you all. Access to quality, as you know, assured medicines and other health technologies is a pillar of universal health coverage. <coughs> Many member states, particularly low and middle income countries, see local production as a strategy to improve access to quality assured, safe and effective medical products. Local production has obvious benefits for health by creating a reliable and affordable supply of essential medicines and other health products. But it also creates jobs and contributes to economic growth. But realizing the promise of local production is not straightforward. Three ingredients are essential. First, an overarching government strategy and plan that considers all the prerequisites for sustainable local production. Second, strong regulatory systems which are essential to ensure the quality, safety, and efficacy of medical products. And third, an enabling business environment to build the knowledge, skills, and capacity of the medical product industry. None of this can be done by minist ministries of health alone. It takes a holistic approach that includes political commitment at the highest level policy coherence, access to finance and technology for sustainable quality production, needs-based innovation, and investment incentives. In the same way, supporting countries to realize the potential of local production is not a job for WHO alone. That's why the six organizations present today, the Global Fund, UNAIDS, UNCTAD, UNICEF, UNIDO, and WHO have come together to launch the first interagency statement on promoting local production of medicines and other health technologies. The statement provides a balanced perspective on the benefits, drivers, and challenges associated with successful and sustainable local production. 
It recognized the complexity <laughs> of promoting sustainable quality local production and translating government and private sector aspirations into desired outcomes. A strong partnership between UN agencies, international and regional organizations, governments, industry, and other stakeholders is critical to supporting countries to build their capacities to develop and sustain quality local production. WHO will continue to nurture and support such partnerships and play a leadership role in promoting the production and regulation of quality assured medical products to improve access. Together, we can ensure that everyone gets the quality medical products they need. Together, we can help to, pro to promote health, keep the world safe, and serve the vulnerable. Thank you so much. And I hope you will excuse me if I leave a bit early because I have other commitments. Of course, a disadvantage for me because I'm only talking but not listening. Not good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Tedros, and uh, I think everybody in this room know of, of your commitment to this agenda, and we are very happy to have you here, even if it's for a few minutes. <laughs> Can I invite Dr. Bernardo Calzadia Sarmiento, who's the Director of the Department of Trade, Investment, and Innovation from the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, who needed to take the floor, please. Excellencies. One big question is how can we deliver together on the sustainable development agenda? And I don't think there is any other issue, development issue, that is more prominent than the promoting local production of medicines. Because we can deliver on people, we can deliver, as mentioned by Dr. Tedros, people is at the core, we can deliver on planet, on the environment, but also we can deliver on, on, on uh, on, on profit. Uh, we should not uh, take this, the economic dimension out of the equation and uh, we as uh, an organization promoting industrial development, we want to see a very balanced uh, way. At present, inadequate access to safe and effective uh, and affordable medicines is a major issue in many developing countries that is causing uh, unnecessary morbidity and mortality, again particularly of the poorest. Inequality in terms of economic growth between different parts of the world and within countries and regions leave many still in poverty, trapped without prospects of employment or a share in economic prosperity, a situation which is exacerbated by poor health of individuals and their families. Whilst the SDGs uh, will look to address climate change, evolving weather patterns are likely to lead to changing disease patterns, which again will have the most profound impact in developing and least developing countries. Uh, through supporting the development of the pharmaceutical industry in developing and least developed countries, we can help address these issues, particularly SDG3, SDG8, SDG9. Uh, it is all about to, to have a holistic perspective, as it is widely now uh, agreed that the proximity of manufacturing to the point of use is of major relevance to safe and effective medicines. The reasons include not least that it shortens supply chains, hence reducing the risk of shortages and stockouts. It can reduce overall cost and it enables closer regulatory oversight by national medicines regulatory authorities. While uh, reliance on imports from distant geographies can impact on the quality of assurance of products, it can also negatively impact economic development through using up hard currency. It is also missed opportunity for job creation and hence more equitable wealth distribution. It is estimated that for every job created in the pharmaceutical industry itself, seven more are created in the broader economy. In part, this is because many inputs are required to produce pharmaceutical and other health products. Therefore, even in countries where finished formulations may not be manufactured moving forward, supporting industries to regional sectors could present direct economic opportunities for all developing countries. From an economic perspective, the impact of improved health on prosperity should also not be underrated. As disease patterns evolve with climate change, countries and regions that are equipped to address the changing demand for health products will be much better positioned to deal with such challenges without relying 
on external support, the nature of which is of, often determined by distant parties. Mm. Hence, the issue is of relevance across all the SDGs in the Agenda 2030. Uh, let me refer to uh, UNIDO. UNIDO has been supporting uh, the production of essential medicines since 2006, supported by the German government. And while it's clear that developing this sector can have a broad uh, range of positive impact, it is a highly, you mentioned, complex endeavor, not least because it is an interface between public health and industrial de development. It requires that multiple parties work in collaboration together, bringing to bear their particular mandates and expertise to address many different constraints, including the areas of investment, trade, regulatory oversight, quality assurance and quality control, human resource development, access to markets, intellectual property, and so forth. It requires a holistic approach. Uh, UNIDO, as a specialized agency looking for industrial development, fully recognizes uh, this uh, complexity and is very uh, supportive to work in partnership, SDG 17, with all these organizations. So we are proud to be a partner here today. Uh, we have developed a, a, a number of solutions and maybe time does not allow to to, to, to elaborate, just name what is more closer to my area, which is we have been working very much on bringing uh, laboratories for uh, accreditation under GLP and ISO accreditation. We have been welding, uh, working on quality intra infrastructure, good manufacturing practice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, just uh, one element, we are focusing very much our work in the uh, regional communities, in particular uh, WAHO. So uh, I, I think that this is important to, to mention that UNIDO has been working on the pharmaceutical manu manufacturing plan for Africa. Uh, we have also activities in other parts of the world, from middle income countries uh, across Asia and Central and South America. To finalize, let me say, Again, and stress, UNIDO is committed uh, to support the strengthening of pharmaceutical industry in the developing world. We recognize that achieving the SDGs requires partnerships. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sarmento. I have the pleasure also to introduce Dr. James Chen, who is the Senior Director of Investment Enterprise from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Unktad, please, sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today is an important day for access to medicine in developing countries and to pursue the Sustainable Development Goal 3, uh, which is on good health for all. In fact, today's launch on the agency's statement on promoting uh, local product, production of medicines and other health technologies shows the commitment of six international agencies to work in partnership with governments and other stakeholders to strengthen local production. UNCTAD is named stakeholder on technology and intellectual property rights under the WHO Global Strategy and Plan for Action on Public Health, Innovation, and Intellectual Property. In that context, we have been cooperating closely with WHO and other UN sister agencies to strengthen local pharmaceutical production and access to medicine in developing countries, in particular through investment and technology dissemination policies. Strengthening local production can help countries rely on domestic sources for essential medicines and thus contribute to public health security, especially in cases of pandemics. Local production may also generate benefits in terms of industrial diversification, technology dissemination, and job creation. Many governments approach local production from the angle of creating domestic productive capacity. Local producers in developing countries often face the challenge of meeting international drug quality standards. Technology and related know-how from foreign investors play a key role in this regard. But a successful technology dissemination is a complex process. Appropriate, appropriate policy incentives need to be in place to attract 
potential providers, and the policies are also needed to ensure the absorption of the technology on the recipient end. UNCTAD has been providing technical cooperation on the design of enabling policies over the years. For instance, UNCTAD facilitated economies of scale through regional harmonization of investment incentives and promotes reliable legal frameworks <coughs> on intellectual property rights. We have also helped a number of developing uh, LDCs in establishing productive facilities in their countries to produce essential medicine or materials for essential medicine. In addition, it has been UNCTAD's role to ensure the coherence of domestic policies relating to investment, intellectual property, trade, and health. Accordingly, policymakers and international agencies should enable the sustainable production of high quality and affordable medicines that respond to domestic public health needs. We suggest six sets of actions to the stakeholders. First, we need to, uh, to assist local producers in their efforts to meet WHO standards of good manufacturing practices and medicine quality, safety, and efficacy. This is a prerequisite for participating in public tenders that ensure a reliable demand. Incentives are needed to promote cooperation and know-how transfer with technology owners. Second, we need to uh, encourage local producers to engage in local innovation to address local needs. This contributes to public health goals, but also to the building of domestic innovation and productive capacity. Appropriate intellectual property policies and innovation systems need to be in place. Third, local production should contribute to the uh, availability and a sustainable supply of essential medicines. This can avoid stockouts and long lead time in, uh, in delivery from uh, producers abroad. Governments should consult with domestic industries to realistically uh, assess um, which medicines have to be imported, where there are shortcomings in foreign supplies, and what are the capacities of the domestic firms. Fourth, local production policies should seek to increase the affordabil affordability of medicines. This may be achieved by promoting generic competition for instance, through licensing agreements between originators and the generic firms. Price controls and establishment of health insurances should play an important role in ensuring that patients are not overburdened. Fifth, local production policies should target, uh, target drugs that are essential in the domestic context. Accordingly, industrial policy measures investment promotion and drug reimbursement schemes may be limited to those products that are included in a country's essential medicine list. Six, these actions that I have highlighted above need to be coordinated between different government ministries to avoid contradictory effects under different policies. Consultations with the industry and the civil society are needed to ensure relevance of the government decisions. Excellencies, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to further collaboration with governments and with other relevant stakeholders to strengthen local pharmaceutical production. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. It was very, very interesting to hear both from the industrial and the development and the trade uh, sides. We're moving now to Dr. Shannon Hader, who's the Deputy Executive Director of, of Pro, the, Pro, the Joint UN Program on HIV and AIDS. And Dr. Hader has recently joined the UN. We're very happy to have you here. Please have Thank, the you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Your Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, UNAIDS champions the need for establishing local production capacity for quality assured medications for HIV, treatment and prevention of opportunistic infections, diagnostics, and other health products. This is to ensure better and healthier lives for people, those living with HIV, but also everybody else, through medication <laughs> access, but also through the benefits of stronger economies and jobs, as Dr. Tedros mentioned in his opening. For HIV, um, in less than two decades, we've gone from only thousands of people living with HIV on effective antiretroviral treatment in low and middle income countries, that was the early 2000s, to nearly 22 million people on these medications. This is an incredible success story, and local production and the expansion of markets played a huge and important role in it. Our early adopters or early leaders, India and Brazil, rapidly scaled up production of quality-assured generic antiretroviral medicines. This helped meet the treatment demand that was created by community-led treatment access movements and eventually a global HIV policy shift to treat all. This drove both volume and competition in the pharmaceutical market, first among generics, but then also among branded or originator companies. The results? Costs of first-line ART regimens in lower-income countries have gone from about $8,600 per person per year in the early 2000s to about $75 US dollars per person per year today. And this is for better drugs and better formulations than two <coughs> decades ago. The drive for access to affordable medications was also paralleled by government and partner commitments to strengthen the healthcare services for appropriate and sound use of these drugs. So it was a win-win success in partnership. By now, other countries like Argentina, Bangladesh, China, <coughs> Egypt, South Africa have also been increasing local production capacity to meet this increasing demand. But it's not only about HIV medications, of course. Global demand for health commodities is growing rapidly. Health priorities evolve as epidemics and populations evolve. The aging global population uh, needs a growing range of medications and assist assistive technologies, and these needs could be further met with expanded local manufacturing capacity and sources of supply. However, maintaining especially the generic competition has become increasingly complex as more countries assume obligations under the World Trade Organization agreements on TRIPS, trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights, and policy options for the use of the public health safeguards provided in TRIPS are becoming increasingly difficult. So the agenda for sustainable development demands our joint action to negotiate and deliver on these global public goods from strengthening disease surveillance and information systems to research and development of health technologies to measures to enhance the access to affordable and quality assured health products that we're here to talk about today. To do this, we have to reconcile the potentially competing interests of the economy, trade and industry with human rights and public health. And I'm quite sure there are, again, win-win opportunities and solutions to do so. The World Health Assembly provides an opportunity to keep access to medicines and other health technologies high on the global agenda. And we applaud WHO, their roadmap on access to health technologies, which provides coordinated guidance in this area. I'd like to share just one important initiative for pushing industry development to achieve public health outcomes. Um, UNAIDS, in partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the International Health Exchange and Cooperation Center of the National Health Commission, designed an access to medicine and local production orientation. This initiative supports African leaders to leverage cooperation with China to drive local production in their respective pharmaceutical industries. It provided these leaders with opportunities to explore and experience China's pharmaceutical industry and to form partnerships. <laughs> this initiative recognizes the major role that health policy plays in the development plans of many African countries. It builds on the long-standing commitment to health from China to African countries and provides opportunities for further collaboration. So we at UNAIDS are committed to working with our partners and governments to ensure the right to access health technologies through community-led and community-based approaches. We have a duty to work together to establish clear position on equitable technology transfer and to advocate for transparency across pr the production chain, including on pricing. So human rights, as we see it, include the right to access of the benefit of science and technology, and innovation should benefit everyone. 
So through this interagency statement, UNAIDS reaffirms its commitment in keeping people at the center of the response, and we look forward to leveraging these partnerships to achieve access to health technologies for all. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hale. HIV certainly was a pathfinder for the, the access agenda and, and influence not only industrial development, but also the, the, the realization that, that access to medicines and to treatment is, is actually really a human right. I'm very happy to give the floor to my friend Stefan Peterson, who's Associate Director from Program Division Chief of Health from UNICEF. Stephen, you have the floor. Thank you, Maria Angela. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you to WHO for organizing and, and putting this topic on the WHA agenda. And, and thank you to my all fellow signatories uh, up and down uh, this long table here. Uh, greetings uh, from uh, Executive Director Henrietta Four, who would have liked to be here. Uh, today, um, and also greetings from our supply division colleagues represented by Achtem Furati here. Uh, and uh, for uh, our colleagues around the world working on this, we affirm our commitment to, to this important cause. In broad terms, as UNICEF, uh, we see, uh, as my colleagues have said, that local production may generate employment opportunities and contribute to local economies. Uh, and specifically for medicines uh, and technologies, it may also facilitate broader access to essential health commodities and technologies at a more affordable cost. It may uh, help address inequities in health outcomes and help support underserved populations, particularly for UNICEF uh, children and mothers, uh, to improve both health uh, and well-being. We also think that local production represents an important step uh, towards universal health coverage and, and the public health goals under the SDGs uh, by helping, helping, uh, by helping helping to, to strengthen uh, primary health care, for which we've had uh, so many good resolutions here. And, and as we know, uh, there is both preventive, promotive, and curative services within primary health care, where uh, access to medicine and medical technologies is actually crucial for primary health care uh, to be effective and to be able to reach the marginalized uh, and the poor living in stable as well as humanitarian uh, conditions and enable them to survive and thrive. Now at UNICEF, we believe local production of essential medicines and health technologies uh, have three major areas where they, it can benefit. And, and this goes well beyond building a factory. Uh, it, this is about market development, it's about product availability, and it's about supply chain uh, efficiency. First, looking at market development, we believe that local production fosters the growth of regional and local markets for these essential medicines and health products, and that it may generate significant market opportunities that could be a factor in driving progress, particularly when aligned with partnerships in supporting the development of the industry and the health workforce, as we've heard. The second is about product ad adaptability. Uh, local production provides an opportunity to ensure that products meet local needs and are fit for local purpose and are contextualized. For instance, uh, locally developed formulations and presentations of essential medicines and health products can be better adapted to the, serve the local beneficiaries and the local context of programming and innovation. Thirdly, on the area of supply chain efficiency. As we've also heard, local production means that you're closer to the end user, potentially reducing supply chain related costs, vulnerability of the long supply chain, uh, and thus may help strengthen uh, health systems and um, enhance supply chain efficiency. At UNICEF, we've long been involved in local production uh, uh, as a long-term strategy, and we do not this across health and nutrition. And I wanted to take you on an example from the nutrition field for uh, where we've worked with local partners uh, over the years for the field of severe acute malnutrition 
to actually promote the local production of ready-to-use therapeutic foods, if you've seen them. The RUTF, ready-to-use therapeutic food for severely malnourished children. If we go back to 2006, UNICEF had one long-term agreement with one European-based produc producer that produced everything for the world. By 2018, last year, as a result of a very deliberate process, we had long-term agreements with 20 RUTF suppliers around the world, and most importantly, 17 of those 20 are based in or close regionally of the countries where the RUTF is to be used. And two-thirds of these producers are in Africa. We've also now over the last three years been sourcing more than half, 55% to be more exact, of the RUTF from these producers based in program countries. So as you can see, it's taken us from 2006 up to now to achieve that, so this is obviously not an overnight uh, process. But we also believe that it's a strong testimony to the critical benefit of developing local suppliers, local markets, to improve the supply chain efficiency and sustainability, creating local mar marketing opportunities, and ensuring the products are fit for the local purpose and often produced from local uh, ingredients. Taking stock of this experience in the field of RUTF, uh, we uh, see that there's a real potential in expanding this now into the production of quality assured medicines and other health technologies in low and middle income countries. Provided, as, we, as we've heard now, that we have the policy and the regulatory and the quality standards uh, address. So the interagency statement um, that uh, we uh, were waving around, and we have not yet formally launched, I, I believe, it's a cooperative effort uh, among us with many other global health and development agencies and funding mechanisms towards this. And it echoes strongly with UNICEF's commitment to supporting children and adolescents to live, to access high impact health, nutrition, HIV, and early childhood development interventions across the life course. And as previous successes prove, uh, we can succeed if we try. Mm -hmm. And we need to put our best efforts to this. And UNICEF is committed to further collaborating with all our sister UN agencies, partners, private sector, and other stakeholders to support local production of medicines and other relevant health technologies. So let's combine our ideas and efforts to generate concrete results and move ahead on this initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Peterson. It's, it's, it's really an interesting conjunction of agencies. And now we go to the Global Fund, Mr. Philippe Francois, who is the head of sourcing and supply division. Please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. It's working out. So thank you very much, Madam Chair and uh, dear colleagues. I'm very, very happy to be here, of course, to support that uh, intelligence statement on, and pr to promote local manufacturing. I think a part uh, of the mandate, of course, of the Global Fund is to source product and to make sure that, of course, we are going to support the population to accelerate the end of the free disease, which is HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis, of course. I think it's critical for us, of course, to look at how can we do that efficiently, and obviously local manufacturing is one way to do it more efficiently. I mean, the benefits are quite obvious at the end of the day. I mean, we few of you, of course, mentioned that, but I would like to re reiterate some of them. I mean, obviously, the, uh, the entire supply chain benefits are quite obvious. The lead time, number one, I think that's going to help us, in fact, to reduce lead time and to have more agile uh, supply chain to make sure that we can, we can face surprises that we've got in those markets. Those surprises can come from, obviously, you know, unanticipated demand or quality issue, which is going to allow us, of course, you know, to, uh, to basically find solutions to, uh, to basically face those type of challenges. The second one, obviously, would be uh, the freight cost. At the end of the day, you know, the, uh, the distribution cost, this is going to help us to enhance, to improve the distribution cost, which is obviously critical and part of, you know, being efficient in terms of, of the cost of the product. The next one I've got in mind, obviously, would be the environmental impact at the end of the day. If you don't fly, you know, drugs all over the world, that's going to help us, of course, to reduce the carbon footprint in, in this world, which is, of course, one of the objectives of all the distribution network that we need to, uh, to, to put in place. 
So as, as you can see, this will have many, many be benefits, of course, to make sure that we produce locally the right products at the right price and then the right quality, obviously. This is happening, by the way. I think it's important to state it. I mean, if I looked at what we've done on the global fund, especially on the sourcing side, just a few numbers here, we've been able to, to source 9 million treatment doses of anti-malarial medicine out of Uganda this year. We've been able also to, uh, to source 13 million bed nets out of Tanzania. So this is happening. And the way that we do that, of course, is to try to look at different criteria in the way that we're managing tenders to try to promote, of course, local manufacturing, obviously with all the other criteria which are critical in those tenders. And of course, pricing and quality are obviously the critical ones. At the same time, we know this is something which is going to be difficult. I mean, if we want to support the uh, SGD free for the long term, we will have to do even more, and we have to look at all the constraints that we're facing when we're producing locally. I think one of the key constraints is obviously, you know, critical mass. I think if you want to, to, to have an eco uh, a product which is viable economically, you need to look at the critical mass. Critical mass means you need to set up capabilities which are going to help you to export, most probably, because you can't just produce for the local demand. You will have to produce, of course, you know, at the regional level for a demand which will be most probably regional. This is going to push you to think about how do you export? Do we have the policies in place to make sure that we can facilitate those exports? Do, do we have the policies in place to make sure that we can import, you know, APIs, for example, the right way to make sure that we are going to be economically viable in those type of, of, of initiatives? So obviously you can see that this is something which we cannot achieve uh, independently. And I think that's why I'm very, very happy to be here, in fact, to make sure that we all trying to look at the way that we can cooperate and the way that we can coordinate ourselves to make it happen. It's happening today, but we need to increase the scales to make it more efficient. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Francois. Can I give the floor next to Dr. Prosper Tumuzimi, who is the Director of Health <laughs> Systems and Service for WHO Afro. We are very happy to have you here. Please. No, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me first take the opportunity to extend uh, sincere apologies from uh, the, our regional director uh, for the Africa, uh, Dr. Moeti, uh, because she had to attend to her health, in, uh, this being a World Health Organization. Uh, so she's unfortunately not been, been able to be physically here. However, she has asked me to uh, read her statement and I'm going to do that right now. It is my pleasure to address the assembly at the occasion of official launch of the intelligence statement on promoting local production of medicines and other health technologies. Releasing an intelligence statement on this important subject is commendable as the numbers of initiatives are rolling out to the African region, in the African region supported by the UN agencies to enhance the capacity of member states through technology transfer. I would like to congratulate all the sister agencies here for this successful joint effort. Reliance on medical product importation is rather high in the African region and can even ex exceed 90% of the requirements that we have. Even in the countries with a strong manufacturing potential have to import a substantial quantity of medicines. To reverse these trends, the African heads of state and government endorsed the AU Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Plan for Africa in 2007, and in 2012, the African Union uh, Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Plan uh, for Africa Business Plan was launched. Within the framework of this uh, plan, the public-private partnerships led by multilateral coordination mechanism that involves all the key stakeholders uh, are currently perceived as a good practice in our region. The approach, we hope, will help to align manufacturing outputs with the health priorities in the countries and in the region, to identify and embed in the national policies and legislation incentives for local production, particularly by leveraging taxation, procurement, and reimbursement schemes, and ensure required infrastructure is in place, such as stable electricity and water supplies, good roads, and access to uh, railways and ports. It also uh, 
ho hopefully it will establish technical parks as one of the possible solutions for beefing up technology, technological basis, strengthen expertise of the regulators and technical workforce of the manufacturers, uh, enable business planning and market intelligence to ensure sustainable sustainability of manufacturers, and promote technology transfers and address the intellectual property considerations. Through its local manufacturing program, WHO has been increasing the capacity of the member states. For example, in December 2018, together with the United States Pharmacopoeia and the NEPAD Planning and Coordinating Agency, and WHO and other international organizations, the capacity of manufacturers was strengthened in leveraging technology transfer opportunities, improving comp compliance with international norms and standards, and leveraging public and poor procurement opportunities in the African continent. WHO and the United States Pharmacopoeia and other partners also supported Ethiopia in particular to launch and implement its national strategy and plan of action for pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, since 2015. This is an example uh, and it, it is being implicated, replicated in countries such as Nigeria and Tanzania in order to help transform the pharmaceutical sector. However, there are challenges, and we need to take cognizance of these challenges uh, that have been encountered, and they include lack of investment, uh, adequate investment to develop robust manufacturing capacity to comply with international standards. There are levels of manufacturing that are taking place, uh, but at local standards, which may not measure up to international standards. And if we are to go out uh, to have markets beyond our own, then we need to uh, have that uh, uh, taken into account. Creating incentives designed to move companies along the value chain uh, is another challenge. And then the production of active pharmaceutical ingredients and capacity for research and development uh, is another that will be required. The African heads of state and government endorsed uh, the treaty for establishing the African Medicines Agency at their 32nd ordinary session of the Assembly of the African Union, which is very good news. As a continental agency, the uh, African uh, Medicines Agency is expected to improve the overall regulatory environment for local manufacturing through pooling expertise and capacities and strengthening networking for optimal use of limited resources available for regulatory authorities and complement and enhance the efforts of ongoing harmonization initiatives. The process uh, towards the African Medicines Agency, however, took rather long, but understandably, because one has to bear in mind that the capacity of the African Union Commission to coordinate such a big initiative required uh, putting together uh, build, uh, an adequate uh, staff uh, capacity and generating adequate final financial resources. I would like to reiterate again, in conclusion, my congratulations uh, for this statement and express my commitment to continue to work in collaboration with other agencies throughout Africa and even beyond to enhance local production for improving sustainable access to quality and affordable medicines and other health technologies for reaching universal health coverage. And WHO uh, will continue to provide technical support towards policy development and harmonization, advocacy, regulatory reforms, and monitoring in order to accelerate the pace of implementing the pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much. As we conclude this panel, my reflections is that it's, it's of course, it's great when the UN works together, but what's really good when we see the different mandates converging on public health interests, right? And of course, and also not only the UN, we have the Global Fund here. It's a very important partner, those who have the money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is very much in the spirit of the 2030 agenda. And can we have a hand of applause for the panel as we move? <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll move to the second part of this, this session.
where we, we will have the representatives of Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Ethiopia, and Pakistan uh, giving uh, some remarks and their views. And the, the panelists, please, if you, if you want to join, sit on the floor, you're most welcome to. Thank you. Can we have the, the panelists? We, we will have His Excellency Mr. Shamin Hassan, who's the ambassador and permanent representative of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Dr. Nizia Trindade Lima, who's the president of Fundação Oswaldo Cruz Fiocruz from the Federal Republic of Brazil. Dr. Yu Jingjing, Director General from the Department of Drug Policy and Essential Medicines, the National Health Commission on People's Republic of China. Ms. Herang Jerba, Director General from the Ethiopia's Food, Medicine, and Healthcare Administration and Control Authority from the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. And Dr. Assad Hafiz, who's the Director General in the Ministry of uh, National Services, Regulation, and Coordination in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. It's good to see you again. <laughs> uh, we will start, what, what we're planning to do now is to hear the statements and, and uh, have some questions uh, uh, to these panelists. And then we will open for a few interventions from the floor. Can we start with the, the ambassador of the People's Republic of Bangladesh? Sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, fellow panelists, a uh, very distinguished collection. Uh, and I probably stand out um, as someone who's not an expert. So I'm limiting myself to reading out, uh, reading out a statement. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, uh, I wish to thank WHO for organizing this technical briefing and for inviting me as a panelist uh, uh, to this. Uh, this. The discussion is indeed very timely given the importance of uh, promoting local production of medicines and other health technologies, as the whole world is committed to achieving universal health coverage and access to quality health care for all, leaving no one behind. The government of Bangladesh, too, is committed to providing effective health care services for its people. Clearly, good quality drugs, standard medical devices and supplies, along with skilled physicians, are prerequisites for promoting improved healthcare services. That is why our government has attached utmost importance in enhancing local production of medicines and health commodities. No doubt, adequate local production promotes easier access to medicines. Local production of medicines in Bangladesh has come a long way over the last three decades. With an annual double-digit growth rate, the pharmaceutical industry is now heading towards self-sufficiency in meeting local demand. This sector already provides 98% of the total local medicinal requirement. Further, we also export drugs and medicines to over 100 countries, valued at around US dollar 103.46 million in the last financial year of 2017-18. Government has set a target of earning US dollar 5 billion from the pharmaceuticals by 2021. And medicinal price in Bangladesh is currently among the lowest in the world. So this is no mean feat for a country, small one, with more than 160 million people, especially because in this issue at least, these people are at the center. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in Bangladesh there are more than 300 small, medium, and large enterprises producing pharmaceuticals. These companies produce drugs in most therapeutic categories and dosage forms, available at low prices in the domestic market. They have mastered the capacity to produce advanced medicines such as biosimilar uh, drugs, vaccines, oncology products, as well as medical devices. Thus, local production in Bangladesh continues its strong research orientation in generic formulation development and also has proven skills with successful development of specialized high-tech formulations. What factors actually helped this development? We note significant generic drug capabilities, cheap labor cost, effective policy measures, sound track record of partnership and alliance with global multinational companies, availability of skilled manpower, 
increasing investment in research and development, investor-friendly environment, and increasing number of international accreditations. The National Drug Policy 2016 has been formulated in compliance with the National, drug, uh, National Health Policy of 2011 and the National Population Policy 2012. Now, the National Drug Policy is mainly aimed at ensuring adequate production of good quality drugs. Accordingly, the current good manufacturing practices guidelines of WHO are being stringently uh, followed. The drug policy further facilitates growth and expansion of the pharmaceutical sector, enhances capabilities of production of better quality drugs, and also increases manifold the scope and opportunities for drug export. This, no doubt, is a success story in local production of medicines and vaccines, but we are yet to make significant strides toward the development and advancement of healthcare technologies, including production and access to the most promising ones. Ladies and gentlemen, globally there is growing need, no doubt, of, for many countries to produce generic essential medicines for their own people. On the other hand, there are key global challenges to be addressed, like rising prices of new pharmaceuticals, rapidly changing markets for health technologies, and lack of market initiatives for older medicines. The absence of regulatory capacity in many countries and the rise in the substandard and falsified medical products on all markets only add to those challenges. In view of these, I believe a few recommendations would be in order. First, it's essential to bring synergies between health, industrial development, and trade policies in the pharmaceutical sector to ensure robust linkage between local production and improved access. In this regard, we appreciate the launching of the, uh, or to be launched, the interagency statement on promoting local production of medicines and other health technologies endorsed by the six organizations that we saw presenting today. Second, creation of regional hubs, strategic focus on the drug product formulation and upgradation of existing value chains may help developing countries build a local pharmaceutical industry. Strengthening of South-South cooperation to scale up investment in pharmaceutical manufacturing capacity in these countries might also be a contributing factor. Third, access to affordable, good quality medicines through local production depends on the availability of scientific and technological capacities. Due to lack of resources and technology, public health R&D takes a back seat in many developing countries. So, an alternative source, of, source or model of funding is required. If the developed countries sincerely carry out their obligations under TRIPS Article Article 66.2 and Article 67, this funding and technology gap could be greatly reduced. Also, considerable redesign, redesigning of the educational systems in all the developing countries is an important long-term co uh, consideration. Lastly, economic cost and quality deserves very serious consideration. If the economic cost of setting up local production capacity is excessive, or if the quality of the product is doubtful, Promoting local production will, know, will not be any solution at all. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, you said you're not an expert, but ambassadors, they are experts on many things. <laughs> <laughs> they know about a lot of things. And let me just ask you a, a follow-up question on uh, uh, how does technology transfer play a role in, in, in Bangladesh? Does it play a role at all in how, because you're talking about new technologies coming into market and the, the biologicals, biosimilars, and this is a, a, a very new field in many aspects. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, I very briefly touched uh, in my presentation about the value of technology. Uh, th there is no doubt that uh, transfer of health-related technologies to developing countries can crucially assist uh, recipient countries to go for local production, and that will increase uh, access to products and improve health. Uh, this can take many <coughs> forms. In, in Bangladesh, we have, uh, as I said, uh, uh, good collaboration with uh, uh, our partners internationally. Uh, we have uh, investment policies uh, in place which uh, in increases the chance of uh, further investment in this uh, sector. And then uh, collaboration with, and, and uh, sorry, in the regulation, uh, regulatory framework which encourages uh, such uh, transfer. But in expansion of a, a pharmaceutical industry which has been 
uh, there for uh, almost three decades, uh, I think there is no doubt the need for looking at new technologies. And, and that is where we face the challenges because uh, the technology transfer as an issue in the international domain has not been a very easy one. Uh, we are making our efforts, uh, but I think we need uh, a, a broad-based understanding across the board uh, among all stakeholders that uh, for, the bet uh, for the betterment of uh, health and well-being of uh, people in the developing countries, and I think nowadays for the attainment of the SDG3, uh, this can be a very crucial step forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll I'd like to give the floor to my fellow country, women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dr. Nisa Trindade Lima is the president of uh, the Fiocruz Foundation from Brazil, who, besides being the National School of Public Health, is also a big producer nationally of medicines, inter in vitro diagnostics, and vaccines. You have the floor. Oh, Good afternoon. I'd like to thank our Dr. Mariangela Simon, uh, WHO, all the agencies who establish a so important document and co political commitment for public health. I think that's the main important point, and my colleagues in the session. So, uh, Fundação Oswaldo Cruz, Fio Cruz, as you generally know, uh, says, is uh, important, uh, the most important scientific institution in the health field in Latin America. And uh, uh, Fio Cruz ho uh, houses two laboratories, Biomanguinhos for the production of vaccines and biopharmaceuticals now, and kit diagnosticas, and uh, farmanguinhos dedicated to uh, medicines, production for production medicines. Besides this, Fiocruz now for uh, 10 years has been, uh, has developing a strong cooperation with Mozambique Medicine Society. So I think that this world as a national producer and as an institution uh, who, uh, which is dedicated for South-South cooperation, especially with spoken, uh, speaking Portuguese countries. I think that some points is very important to share with you. Brazil is today the sixth largest pharmaceutical market in the world rising from 36 billion in uh, 2013 to 57 billion in 2017. Growth rate of sixth during only four years, including a period in a national economic context of crisis while maintaining strong growth. Projections point the fifth place in the next three years uh, in accord of Brazilian Pharmaceutical Association. Among these products, uh, producers, I would like to highlight the role of Fiocruz. Fiocruz being the 80th largest laboratory in the country. Considering only the generic market, there are uh, uh, 13 national laboratories among the 20 largest, including Fiocruz, which is the great Brazilian biotechnology producers. In order to promote local production, I think that some points are very important to be considered. And I will relate some points uh, relate to Brazilian experience. Brazil continuously faces these challenges already exposed here, but uh, accumulated some successful strategies. The strategy to, com to combat AIDS, which involved the emphasis on local production, enhancement of communication actions, and the multiple pr 
presentations available for patients. Besides this, uh, public health policy involves the treatment, education, and, and uh, in a very good perspective. Maria knows better than I. Uh, the installed vaccine production capacity represented by public institutions, especially Oswaldo Cruz Foundation and Butantan Institute. Butantan now is finishing the development of a, a vaccine for dengue, which inserts the country with the emphasis on the manufacture of immunobiological substance, supply the public health system, and also exported to more than 70 countries. Uh, partnership for Productive Development, an example of a public-private partnership that stimulates competition, promotes innovation, and ensures access, anchored in a national demand, the demand for, uh, from uh, the Brazilian health system, a uh, universal health system. That's, uh, which sees the health as a human right. Well, besides this point, I think that's very important to think about uh, uh, some strategies that are not linked only with Brazilian experience. Um, first, articulation, uh, the, the importance of the articulation between the health and an open temporary industry policy to foster the health economic industrial complex to attend the health needs. The idea is to stimulate a more symmetrical distribution of global production. And I think that is one of the points of the political committee for promoting local pro production. A proeminence should be given, second point, proeminence should be given to the vaccine area. It involves simultaneous strategy to raise awareness of the social importance of vaccines, while consolidate local production and the techno technology. This is be, uh, these factors are be, uh, fundamental to guarantee access at global level. Another point, comparative perspective, perspective for technological incorporation. I think that local, uh, promoting local production is a very important goal, but besides this, it's important to stimulate comparative studies, studies for uh, the this, this subject of technological uh, incorporation. We have to think local, but you have to share uh, in a very strong basis this experience uh, just to think about effectiveness and public health interests. Fiocruz is the largest institution of science, technology, and innovation in Latin America. And my proposal is to participate as one of the stakeholders with the other developing countries in the medicines and the vaccine area, and the also diagnostics area, to direct innovation toward health needs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nisa. If you could summarize in a sentence, a few words, what, what's the key factor for success? Because Brazil has a very strong domestic production. What do you think is the key success factor? Uh, the <laughs> oh, thank you for so good question. I think the key question is an integrated perspective from Brazilian health system. The, uh, Br Brazilian health system approved by uh, the Constitution of 1988, uh, it has all the dimensions of the complexity of health. Research, uh, surveillance, care, uh, in an environment that promotes this. Another point is the political commitment of access. Uh, the political commitment of us. That's quite a good summary. Thank you. 
Now I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Jing Yu, who is the Director General for the Department of Drug Policy and Essential Medicines in the National Health Commission in the People's Republic of China. On my right hand side, please, sir.重要的话题取得了建设性进展和成效 和制剂生产企业，四千四百四十一家；药品批发企业一点四万家；零售连锁企业五千六百七十一家；零售连锁企业门店二十五点五万家；零售药店二十三点四万家；患者可评处方到零售药店购药。突出药品临床价值，国家
会商联动机制，采取加强供需对接、定点生产、打击垄断违法违规行为等一系列措施，有效解决了多种药品的供应问题。下一步，我们将学习借鉴世界卫生组织和其他国家的有效做法，继续突出药品临床价值，以临床药品用药需求为导向。统筹完善国家药物政策，发挥好药品使用监测和综合评价的基础支撑作用，保障群众用药需求，提高药品可行性。谢谢。Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Yu. Yeah, the numbers in Ch the Chinese numbers are always staggering, you know, so <laughs> such an impressive uh, task that you have. Uh, so let me ask you a quick question, because China, we all know that has taken multiple actions to improve access to quality assured medicines in the past years. And, uh, and also you, you are very strong in considering the multi-dimension of international cooperation. So th this is, uh, I am always also impressed by the long-term planning that China has on, on, on all aspects. Could you share a little bit more on, on what China is doing to promote lo local production in general and, and also in the, the partnerships with other countries?重要领域，在“一带一路”倡议、中非合作论坛和南南合作的框架下，中国积极支持和促进药品和医疗器械、呃本地化的生产，并愿意加强不同层级的一些合作。呃，这对于解决当地居民的医疗卫生需求呢，
Access to life-saving medicines is a human right, but it remains far from being guaranteed for the majority of people living in Africa. More than 80% of the African demand for essential medicines is met by imported medicines, imported health commodities, but still availability of essential medicines stands below 70%. This is due to weak local pharmaceutical production capacity, unreliable pharmaceutical importation and distribution system, and high cost of relatively new and patented medicines, which hinders millions of poor people, especially in developing countries like Ethiopia, from obtaining medicines when they need them the most. In July 2012, recognizing the need for strengthening the pharmaceutical industry on the continent, African leaders endorsed the business plan for pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa, which is PMPA. In the last decade, the Ethiopian pharmaceutical sector has made some progress in terms of improving the production capacity of the existing few local manufacturers, but the progress which we have made couldn't match with the rising local demand for essential medicines. The extent of the expansion of the healthcare delivery and ever increasing health service demanding behavior of the Ethiopian population. Ethiopia has managed to register a remarkable broad based economic growth over the past 10 years. Accordingly, the government has designed and is implementing strategies, policies, and plans to guide and manage the overall development of the country. It has adapted and implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with strong government commitment and full sense of national ownership to implement the SDGs as an integral part of its national development framework, which is included in the second five-year growth and transformation plan of the country. Accordingly, implementation of SDGs has been and is well in progress in Ethiopia. Ensuring access of affordable, quality-assured, and safe medicines through local production has become one of the top priority and strategic agenda for the government of Ethiopia, in line with the SDGs and the National Growth and Transformation Plan. The government of Ethiopia has developed and is currently implementing the National Strategy and Plan of Action for Pharmaceutical manufacture, Manufacturing Development in Ethiopia, which is in short term as NSPA Pharma which was in considered as the first country-level translation of the vision of the African Union's pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa. The implementation of the strategy demanded the engagement and commitment of key government regulatory agencies, stakeholders, and partners in improving supply and access to quality medicines and working to create incentives within the market. The implementation of the NSPA Pharma is guided by a joint steering committee which is composed of and accountable to the highest government representatives, the collaborative leadership and guidance of the ministries of health and industry has re resulted in significant achievements, which include implementation of the national good manufacturing practice roadmap and improving access. The types of locally produced medicines has improved from 142 to 156 improvements on good manufacturing practice roadmap implementation gap assessments conducted, which are which conducted in 2016 and 2018. And this gap assessment has identified what are the cri uh, critical gaps which uh, they, the manufacturers did not fulfill to the GMP standard. And that has seen improvement during the years after the assessment has been conducted. National GMP compliance, there are two newly established companies who are fully GMP compliant, that is the local national GMP uh, compliance. Then there is WHO pre-qualification assessment which is going on for two factories. One is for pharmaceuticals and the other one is uh, rapid test kit and the, the rapid malaria test kit manufacturer has gained, has acquired WHO PQ certificate recently. The other is the institutional development and regulatory strengthening, which is also stated in the national strategy. And the, the regulatory system, recently we have uh, approved a new proclamation, and the authority is reorganizing itself to become Ethiopian Food and Drug Administration. Pharmaceutical Industries Capacity Building Institute is established. There is an, in, an institute which is solely mandated to, uh, to conduct or to give capacity building to the newly emerging pharmaceutical industries. There is institutional development plan, which is which we are working as a regulatory authority with WHO using the global benchmarking tool. And supporting new pharma investments during the startup, 
We, we support jointly with the Investment Commission, Minister of Industry, us, Minister of Health, and the other uh, ministries in order to uh, promote pharmaceutical manufacturing industries, starting from their startups. And due to this, um, there are 10 other investments, both local and foreign, in pipeline now. Uh, some have acquired land and some on the process of submitting their project proposals. And the other thing is creating conducive environment that includes development and approval of attractive incentive packages that support the overall uh, development of local manufacturing. This is endorsed by the high level le leadership, by the investment board led by uh, His Excellency, our Prime Minister. Development of a pharmaceutical dedicated industrial park. We have more than 300 hectares allo allocated for solely for pharmaceutical industries. And 10% of, at, at this moment, 10% is already acquired and allocated for investors. And we are also promoting, there are also other industries on the pipeline. This 10% this ten, this ten is acquired uh, by investors who have already signed MOU with our Ethiopian Investment Commission. Additionally, a lot of efforts have been put to improve policy coherence, product diversification, human capital development, and capacity building in the pharmaceutical sector. So strengthening sustainable local production of quality assured medicines is a critical strategy to ensure reliable access to affordable medicines and contribute to achieving universal health coverage. Besides, it can also contribute to social development and catalyze knowledge-based economic growth, research, and development. On the way forward, it's important to sustain the positive achievements of the NSP Pharma of Ethiopia and scale up the experiences to realize the wider vision of ensuring healthy lives and promote, promoting well-being to our society. For this, the, our government should further strengthen its comp political commitment and leadership and enhance ownership of the strategy into institutional strategic plans. In collaboration with partners and stakeholders, it also should develop and implement national strategic plans, encourage research and development, and consider the establishment of integrated pharmaceutical market database system. The government of Ethiopia appreciates the technical and financial support provided by WHO, UNIDO, UNCTAD, UNAIDS, UNICEF, Global Fund, USPP, QM, and other partners in the development and implementation of the strategy, national strategy. At this moment, the government of Ethiopia not only expresses its commitment to do whatever is necessary in transforming its pharmaceutical industries and fostering local pharmaceutical production, but also voices its concerns about the sustainability and availability of resources in achieving the targets of the strategy. Hence, I call upon international development partners to continue their support in local production of priority and essential products, uh, not only medicines, but medical devices and other health technologies, and in building sustainable local capacity to produce quality assured essential medicines with sufficient resource. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I had a question for you, but you actually addressed it in, in your speech. <laughs> and we are running a little bit late on time. So can I give the floor to the Dr. Hafiz, who's the Director General for Health and Ministry of National Services, Regulation, Coordination in the Islamic Republic of Iran? Of Pakistan. <laughs> Thank you, um, Chair, Excellencies, Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon on the fifth long day of World Health Assembly. And thank you for skipping your lunch to be here today to listen to us. I'd like to thank uh, WHO and um, uh, other partners to invite Pakistan on the official launch of the interagency statement on promoting local production of medicines and other health technologies. Uh, in the next uh, eight to ten minutes, very briefly, I'll give you a perspective from Pakistan and then flag some issues which could be generic to other developing countries uh, in, in this uh, scenario. Uh, we are committed in Pakistan uh, to protection and promotion of public health uh, through one health approach of WHO and also to improve access to quality assured, safe and efficacious medicine as one of the strategic objectives to develop our healthcare system. And this is in line with our national health vision for the next 10 years from 2016 to 2025. Uh, Pakistan has a very thriving 
uh, pharmaceutical sector with more than 700 um, licenses, production licenses, given to different companies, local and international. The growth rate over the last decade or so in the pharmaceutical sector has been close to 18 to 20 percent, uh, which we feel is, is quite uh, healthy. Uh, we do provide, the government does provide investment, uh, conducive environment for establishment of both local and multinational pharmaceutical through different uh, uh, incentives. We are also striving to enhance regulatory compliance level of existing pharmaceutical se uh, sector to bring it at par with the international standards. Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan was established about five years ago. It is still not of, uh, uh, of, of long standing, but it has um, uh, achieved some significant steps in its short life of five years uh, around. Uh, we try to address the need of active policies uh, for affordable access to essential medicines through legislation and enforcement to control substandard and falsified health products. A recent example is the legislation towards uh, implementation of barcoding for all the licensed products. And the legislation takes a long time. It is still under process, but soon we would be having this um, in, in the country. We're also enhancing the capacity of our National Institute of Health, which is a government organization mandated for providing safe, effective, and quality vaccines for indigenous population in line with international standards. One recent example of uh, local production and, um, uh, and, and uh, uh, efficacious use of our uh, uh, industry has been uh, the hepatitis, the new hepatitis drugs. Uh, about uh, eight to ten years ago, one tablet of sofosubir would cost around hundred dollars per per uh, dose. Now, in 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 almost two hundred dollars, we can get a complete course of three months plus. So this has been possible with the production of uh, the quality uh, production of our local industry. I would also like to allude to uh, uh, my, uh, an earlier statement by uh, UNICEF colleague here who talked about uh, RUTF. And Pakistan is in process of licensing and actually uh, very soon producing uh, ready to use uh, therapeutic food. Uh, and there are some, uh, and it is a complete range of these products for mothers, for pregnant and lactating mothers for children with severe acute malnutrition and for moderate malnutrition. So that has been something which, which again has been possible with the help of uh, international partners uh, resulting in, in local production. And we have a huge demand of uh, nutritious products uh, in, in, in Pakistan. Some of the issues uh, which I would like to highlight is, of course, uh, uh, it was also earlier mentioned about regulatory environment. And we believe uh, that with local production should go hand in hand with stringent regulatory environment. Sooner or later, uh, if either one of these is, is lagging behind, it would be counterproductive uh, for, uh, for the domestic as well as uh, for regional um, uh, markets. Uh, Bringing in effective regulation is not easy. It requires a lot of commitment and a lot of capacity. So this is an area where international partners could actually work with the uh, local governments, domestic governments, and also produce some basic um, uh, regional standards uh, or global standards. We should move towards that, that once we are going into more and more local production facilities, uh, there, there should be some work on, on um, developing uniformity of standards for production. Uh, pricing also is, is um, a major issue in, in, um, uh, in developing countries. Uh, very recently, Pakistan had a crisis in, in pricing of uh, medicines, which some of you may know. 
uh, but it has been an enigma wrapped in mystery that how pharmaceuticals actually uh, bring about their final pricing, uh, retail pricing. A lot of work uh, effort went uh, uh, in, in our country, but still it's, it's an area which needs more um, uh, attention, particularly when um, in those countries where um, uh, APIs or um, active, uh, the raw material is imported. So uh, uh, linking on with the APIs, it's not only the local production of, um, of uh, finished products, but also the local preparation and production of APIs which should be encouraged and which should be um, strengthened in countries which intend to make, uh, uh, to, to uh, strengthen their pharmaceutical sector. Um, and once we talk about uh, uh, medicines, we, we should not forget uh, the other health technologies, the diagnostics and uh, the technologies used in um, healthcare sector. We feel that developing countries, um, uh, for example, Pakistan has made significant progress in, um, uh, in pharmaceuticals. However, the technologies and the diagnostics, uh, they require more attention. And even the regulatory ambit is still not uh, up to that. Uh, level. So I'll stop here and uh, thank you very much once again for your uh, invitation. Thank you very much and thank you for reminding us all that there are other technologies besides medicines. <laughs> Diagnostics and medical devices are a part of treatment. We can't have, you can't just treat people without, with medicines without uh, these other technologies. Uh, we, uh, I'll propose that we run this session until 2.20, if it's okay with you, okay? And, and those who need to leave, um, I apologize for, for the lateness. We would like to invite Dr. Ellen Tuin, Director of Medicines, Law and Policy, to say a few remarks from the civil society side. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I would like to thank WHO for this opportunity to make a few, um, a few brief, brief remarks. We've heard the role of local production of essential medicines and, and other health pro products. The importance uh, uh, for the health field is obvious and we can, we can look at some very clear examples. It's not a coincidence that it's countries such as Thailand and Brazil that had a local production capacity. They were also the first in offering universal access to antiretroviral uh, medicines, for example. Uh, local production policies cannot only be informed by industrial and, and economic policy objectives. For local production to be beneficial to public health, economic policies need to go hand in hand with health and pharmaceutical policies. And this is exactly why this joint undertaking, of course, is so important. Local production requires a regulatory and intellectual property framework that is conducive to public health that assures quality production and that does not create barriers to the registration of generic products. This is very uh, important and needs to be, uh, needs to be looked at with, with, with some urgencies. Um, I would like to make the point that countries should explore within the context of exploring further strengthening um, local uh, capacity, um, uh, flexibilities in intellectual property law, particularly patent law, to encourage local production in trade in lower priced generic medicines. It is important in that context to note that the least developed countries have maximum flexibilities in intellectual property because they're not obliged to grant or enforce pharmaceutical uh, product um, patents. Uh, it is no coincidence that the first generic sofosbuvir was produced in Bangladesh, an LDC country that also has important API production capacity. Now this flexibility combined with the options that regional economic blocks have under the World Trade Organization's TRIPS rules can help create economies of scale for local production. Because clearly when local production is going to be effective, regional collaboration will be uh, essential. Um, in that context, it, I would also like to mention it's important to explore options of licensing, uh, the licenses of the medicines patent pool for local production. Some of those restrict the production to certain countries, but now the medicines patent pool has expanded its scope. I think this needs to be explored further for this purpose. High income countries, as some of you have mentioned, have 
strong obligations under the TRIPS agreement to take measures to ensure technology transfer to LDCs. Uh, and while there are some interesting projects, when you look at the reports made to the TRIPS Council by high-income countries, uh, that those efforts lack behind their, uh, their obligation. In preparation for this meeting, I, I went through the report that the European Union made, for example, in January of this year to the TRIPS Council, and the report lists only one uh, mention of local uh, production, but that concerned production and sale by youth with disabilities of children's toys in Eswatini. That has very little to do with what we discuss here uh, here today, and Ambassador uh, Hassan also uh, raised this issue. It, uh, I mention it because it is uh, further evidence that more needs to be done to bring trade and industrial policies and health policies uh, closer together. Thank you. Thank you very much. For those who don't know, Dr. Ellen Toon was the first director of the Medicines Patent Pool. Thank you. It's gone a long way. Uh, Dr. Margaret Wynn, who's the Senior Policy Manager from Health Action International, please, uh, can I ask you to Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak at this important uh, technical briefing. I'm the last speaker. I'll keep it brief. Um, you know, government-supported local production should lead to the manufacture of medicines that are on the national essential medicines list, as we've heard, and also those that address uh, neglected tropical uh, diseases in the country. They should be cheaper than the equivalent imported medicines and hence more affordable, both for governments and for people. They should be continuously available through uninterrupted supply chains and of assured quality, as many of our speakers have mentioned. It's really critical to measure the effects of local production on access to essential medicines. And to assist in this, we've developed a methodology to measure and compare the price and availability of locally produced and imported medicines. We've undertaken three national studies now in Africa, in Tanzania, Ethiopia and Kenya, and they've shown very mixed results. Um, in two cases, when we talk about government procurement prices, the local prices, the local produced medicines were cheaper. In one case, they were not. Um, but what was extremely interesting was the different markups that were applied to the medicines, so that the cheaper medicines got a far higher markup in the public sector than the higher priced hmm. medicines. And what was happening when people, uh, patients had to pay for medicines, in the public sector, out of their pockets, they were not benefiting from low procurement prices. So I do think that governments have a responsibility to look at their own policies in this. They can be supporting local production, yes, but they've also got to look at their own policies to make sure, in particular, that low procurement prices get passed on to people who, particularly in the public sector, where they've got to pay out of pocket. Um, in the private sector, well, again, two countries, imported medicines were higher priced in one country, the locally produced were, and in the mission sector, um, in all three countries, the local products were cheaper. Availability, another important issue. Uh, again, mixed results across these three countries. In two, locally produced products actually had higher availability than imports, but in the other country, the opposite was seen. But this doesn't address the important issue of uh, supply security. And I do think we need to further develop more indicators and get a, a broader picture of really the impact of local production. I think looking at price and availability is a really good start, but I think at some stage we should look and develop some more. Um, so again, as I said, not a uniform uh, impact and effect of local production, and I really urge countries to uh, regularly monitor, particularly prices, uh, to see are people benefiting from particularly where they're supporting local production. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ruin. You're not the last speaker, we had two I, I'm going to give two minutes to each. One is Greg Perry from the International Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, 
And Dr. Moji, where are you? Oh, okay, you better, can you sit already by a microphone, please? Greg, two minutes. <laughs> Um, first of all, I just want to say on behalf of the IFPMA, we welcome this initiative of the six institutions and we would look forward to working with you in achieving those common objectives and we will reach out also to our generic colleagues to participate in any process that goes forward. But I want to take the opportunity uh, to just outline the uh, points which were raised in 2014 uh, in a meeting which I chaired of uh, EU and Africa Business Forum in Brussels, which consisted of generic manufacturers from Africa, as well as generic um, manufacturers from Europe and innovative companies. And we listed six key issues. So take this from the point of the private sector operating to try and, and encourage local production. One is regulatory capacity building and speedy regulatory process, it's already been mentioned. Second was active and strong criminal actions against falsified uh, products and substandard products in the region. Uh, three was health system strengthening, that's the supply chain, but also financing through insurance for the purchasing of products. Four was sustainable pricing, and this was actually very strong from African uh, local producers. This isn't about ensuring security of supply, quality of products being taken account, into account, not just price. Five is establishing a proper business environment and governance system within, uh, within the local area. And six was looking at areas such as licensing and technical transfer with respect, with respect of governance and IP rights. Then, just very quickly, Africa, I'm uh, focusing on that. Importance is building an internal market. Botswana is not Brazil. It does not have the same amount of people in it and the same internal market. So you have to look at how you can encourage internal market systems within Africa. Uh, two was the high cost of capital uh, and, uh, and, and loans, which needs to be addressed. We cannot uh, encourage local production without that. And the third and probably most important is establishing education and training as fundamental parts. Pharmacists, manufacturing sites all need education and training, so those are all aspects that need to be taken into account. They have been addressed by the panel, but I think they're important, and that's just to take it from the private sector that will be sort of vanguard in trying to establish all these local production issues. Thank, thank you very much, Greg. Lastly, we're going to hear from Professor Christiana Moji Sola. Professor Moji, I hear your call <laughs> from Nigeria. Yes. Th thank you so much. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, thank you for organizing this meeting. Uh, very important uh, for Africans. I'm the Director General of uh, Equivalent of, NAB of uh, FDA in Nigeria. We call it NABDAC. And uh, I'm also the steering committee chair of uh, African Medicine Regulatory Harmonization. And uh, our goals in the country and within the continent actually merge very well, which is uh, the goals include uh, ensuring quality medicines for Africans and uh, strengthening the regulatory system. And of course, uh, local production, which is why uh, we are here. In Nigeria, we import about 70% of our medicines uh, and make 30% locally. Uh, what we are trying to do is to reverse that trend uh, to have 70% or thereabouts uh, locally and 30% import. And what are we doing to accomplish that is to strengthen the pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, sector through strengthening of our own regulatory uh, system. Uh, we, as talking of my agency, we've gone through, or we are going through so many things to make sure that the internal capacity uh, within the agency is very strong, which includes uh, quality management system, global um, GBT, you know, global benchmarking tool is now in my head now that I dream about it, so to say. Uh, and uh, it's true that, that we are strengthening our uh, local manufacturers. Uh, we did uh, an industry-wide uh, GMP roadmap that was funded by uh, USAID and the uh, USP, and uh, we, that has resulted in categorization of our companies uh, to low, medium, and high risk. And I told the high risk group that don't stay too long being high risk. I, you know, 
give yourself a three-year, five-year plan how to move from high risk to low or medium risk. So we are doing a lot uh, in Nigeria to ensure that we have drug security. And uh, the points that were made by the different uh, uh, funding agencies, the first panel, very, it resonated very well. All the points resonated very well. And uh, uh, the goal, of course, is to make sure that you know, we have drug security for our people. Uh, but in doing so, we are strengthening uh, our regulatory system. Thank you so much.